Hello and welcome to Still Got Legs, a Doctor Who rewatch podcast brought to you by Another Happy Studios. This week we're back in New New York with cars, cats and crazy adventures. Hello, welcome to Still Got Legs, the only Doctor Who podcast in the world. My name is Nathan. As always, I'm joined by my co-host, Lawrence. Hello. Hello. Why the giggles? What, what do you mean, why the giggles? You got the giggles. You're having a little little laugh to yourself over there. I wasn't having a little What do you mean? I heard it, and the audience heard it too. You had a little giggle. What are these accusations you're <laughs> levelling at the start of this podcast? They're good accusations. G- giggling's like a, you know... No one's going to put you on trial for having a little laugh. The giggle was because I just made up the intro off the top of my head. And I don't know if you could tell, but like I didn't know what to say for the end part. I thought you were going to go with a big old face or something. Well, no, because I was doing an alliteration sort of thing. So cars, cats, and crazy adventures. That's true. Well, I think you did a good job. I couldn't make that up on the spot as I go along. No, you couldn't, because you're bad at a lot of stuff. This is the Doctor Who podcast, where we talk all about Doctor Who. I've lost my notes. Hold on. (laughs) (laughs) I have my notes, if that's any consolation. Well, that's, that's good. That's definitely good. I just wanted to let the people know that, of course, this week we are talking Series 3, Episode 3. This is Gridlock. It's written by the man himself, Russell T. Davies. It's directed by Richard Clark. Um, I'm looking at my the, my list of directors now, and there's at least one more episode this series that he has directed. Um, but I can't see his name popping up in other places. So there we go. There we go. I think you can always tell when there's a bit of Russell writing on, on display. I think this this comes across very much as a as a hymn there's lots of weird and silly things that go on in this which yeah. feel like his calling card yeah yeah that's where, true where are you at with this episode as a whole <laughs> um this episode he's giggling again i knew it <laughs> what do you mean i like it when you giggle it's a little cute giggle <laughs> okay um <laughs> uh this episode is a, a fun little romp I think it's mm. you know it's nothing huge spectacular groundbreaking amazing end of the world stakes it's not boring shakespeare stuff it's you know it's a good it's just a good fun doctor who adventure really a good fun way to spend 45 minutes on a saturday evening or saturday yeah. morning i think it yeah it's a yeah a throwback <laughs> we're recording at a different time yeah. we were too tired on our last podcast we recorded so we we switched it up um no, I, I like this. I think it's... Do you know what? I think it brings back a, just a good old mystery. Like a good old... There's a bit of eerie setup. You don't quite know what's going on. And when you kind of get clued in properly... Yeah. Like the Doctor literally travels to different people to get different kind of nuggets and clues to piece it all together. <sighs> yeah. Um, which, yeah, I, I really, really liked. Um, but it's also grounded in like a character way and like the doctor's just repeating his previous riz taking martha to the same second or first date he took rose on and there's i don't know there's elements where like i like that the doctor is kind of just a guilt-ridden not great guy in this in this episode until the very end i have a note that just says my first note is that 10 is so pathetic yeah Um, (laughs) just just taking martha to exactly where he took rose it's just like He's not even thinking. He's not even being subtle about it. He's still just like, oh, Rose. Like, all the adventures we had. Yeah, exactly. Now he's taking Martha to all these hot spots and stuff. And it's, ugh. Grow up, man. Grow up. Yeah. Um, I do then like him talking about Gallifrey, though. We get a nice moment where uh, Martha asks if they can go to his planet. And he's like, uh, maybe that that's definitely a possibility that can happen he says lying like a liar yeah. um <laughs> um and, and then she she manages to coax a little bit out of him and he starts to uh talk about it describe it just a little bit um and it's quite nice it's a nice little moment it, it is a nice moment because martha is trying to just chip away at the fucking like he's got if like if some people regularly have their guard up his yeah. is up like 
you're going to have to fight through an army to get to any emotional connection to him right now. And he's very much like Martha's chipping away at it. And he kind of, he, yeah, you're right. He kind of lets it slip a little bit. And then he's kind of mad at himself for yeah. like divulging any of that information. Yeah. Um, which obviously is a nice contrast to the end of the episode, but we'll, we'll get there. Um, yeah, you just see, you just see sadness. Like it just, when he starts speaking about a tiny bit about Gallifrey and then he's like, what do I want to go back home for when I can go here? Yeah. To new, new earth, uh, uh, a shithole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, well, it's not looking great. They land in like uh, the Undercity, and it's uh, it's a studio in Cardiff to start with, um, yes. and and it looks like shit. It's supposed to. It's like this dingy alleyway where there's like drug peddlers and all this sort of stuff. Um, it, the the mood stuff is interesting. Yeah, I I <laughs> I wrote down that I don't know if like forget is a mood, and like well, there's a. <laughs> No. They stretch the definition of mood. They do, bit. yeah. It's it's like any mood is any emotion slash any just thing that happens psychologically, I guess. Yeah. So. They're they're the plot convenience dealers, yeah. basically. <laughs> yeah. But it's interesting though. It's interesting to see how like drugs and stuff have evolved and, and what that becomes, these these little patches that you just slick on and and there you go. Yeah. I think it's also like it's appropriately miserable and sad. Like yes. you go to a mood dealer, like buying drugs is like not a cool thing to do anyway. Like it, there's always an inherent, like I feel kind of a bit gross, but how do you like, know that Lawrence? I don't know that Nathan. <laughs> and I sounds shan't like, be incriminating Sounds myself, like but... you have experience there. Lawrence. No, no. I've just spent time reading firsthand accounts of things. <laughs> okay. I am well read. <laughs> Okay. Um, no, but like, but there's, so yeah, like I don't know. Needs a little patch of truth on them. No, oh no, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the honesty patch. I think you mean. Oh yeah, that we sorry. see later on in the episode. Forgive me. Um, but yeah, no, I like that. Well, I'll tell you what. One one concept that I think is really fucking cool is returning to somewhere we've already seen, but it being like <sighs> the flip side of it. You get to see the underworld side of like, because before. And you get to see it again because they reuse the same shot in as like a <laughs> yeah. <they do. laughs> here's what the TARDIS scanned last time or whatever the fuck. <laughs> yeah. But like before we saw it, and it was like that meme. I think we even said it on the episode. It's like that meme of like society if something good happened or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And this time round, it's just like yeah, it's it's like the the gross kind of back alleys. Mm. Uh, I've been in London markets that feel like this. Yeah. Um, and for that to be like in the distant future is kind of bleak and sad and not great. Yeah, I think that's more just a product uh, production design sort of thing. <laughs> but yeah, but it, it's budget is... working hand in hand with. The I vibes. tell you what, the, the, this episode is. Uh, it's not the bottle episode of. This, I don't know if there is a bottle episode of this series, um, but it's it's this is one where the budget was massively saved. They. <laughs> They have one set for a car, which they just redecorate over and over again, and then that's pretty much all they need for it. Pretty, pretty much a few extras, <laughs> like yeah, yeah. It, and also like, I don't. I, we'll, we'll, we'll get there. Um, one thing that I really, really enjoy is the um, when the doctor comes out and it's like pouring down with rain. Yeah. There's there's an attention to detail that I just love, and you, you'll have probably seen this on Twitter because I didn't notice it the first time, and I looked for it this time. Um, the the arrow that uh, the Queen shot at the Doctor's TARDIS yeah. last episode, he rips out of the door in this one. Yeah, very good. Yeah, Bit I love fun. that. Yeah, yeah. You, you never Just noticed that... that before? No, I've never seen it before. Like I'd, <clears throat> I'd like, I know he came out and he like did something, but I just yeah. never, I because I I haven't rewatched the season as a whole. Like I might rewatch the episode. Yeah, but I wouldn't have watched it back to back after that episode, so I never saw it play out like that. Interesting. Um, Interesting. But yeah. Uh yeah no I've known about that for years I probably picked it up when I first watched it because that's just well I said it on this episode Nathan so I think great. we all know that I brought it up <laughs> great well done um so interesting little moment Martha gets kidnapped um yes. or carjacked or whatever they call it she gets kidnapped um so they can go to the far side now I you may you may you probably won't be aware of this but I specifically remember 
around around about the time this was airing and and Doctor Who series 3 was coming back I was I was so excited for it I was so ready and I was yeah. so ready that this was the time where I first started to delve into the online space to find uh, some blogs and some reactions and see what other people were thinking about this yeah. show that was coming back. So this was kind of my first foray into this sort of online Into the world. fandom. Into the fandom, yes, exactly. Yeah. That and... you've become such a pivotal part of later <laughs> with this episode and podcasting. Exactly, general. yes. Such a key figure. The... <laughs> <laughs> um, and one thing I specifically remember is all that when, the, when the trailer came out, there was the shot of uh, the Martha getting kidnapped and the guy uh, holding the gun to Martha. But it was very quick. It was like one or two seconds. You didn't really see much of it. And, and the amount of people who were convinced that this was Chris Eccleston back as Doctor Who, because it was like a shaved head looking guy in a black leather jacket. And they were like, oh, nine's back. Chris is back. It was fucking huge and i probably got caught up in it myself um but no it just turned out to be some guy that um is, that doesn't make any sense why no, would it be? i don't know i don't know <laughs> is that just an instance of like someone thought they saw something some once and it's like yeah kind of it just it, like in the tr you could probably find him once the trailer today but it just it was a very quick shot and you couldn't see his face you just saw what seemed vaguely like chris because yeah it was like the shaved head the leather jacket and stuff um yeah. and and they were like yeah this is chris because if they're gonna bring it back they of course they just spoil the reveal in a little trailer for no reason but i mean doctor who have done that they literally <laughs> have yeah to be fair <laughs> um, well that, but like it, I guess that kind of it's good to know the fandom hasn't changed because no. there's now still like there's a Clownery. picture taken off like there's like a one pixel photo somewhere of like what looks like if you gave a Minecraft character a slight quiff and people are like Matt Smith confirmed for the 60th special yes. and it's like if he's in it fine whatever but that's not him <laughs> there is always clownery afoot when it comes to uh, the doctor who fandom we cannot help ourselves so so you were gutted when it turned out to be just regular milo i don't know if i ever actor. i don't know if i ever got caught up in the hype of um of nine return i don't think i ever quite believed it i don't think i was like yeah i was like no it's probably just some guy but, yeah but especially there, yeah. knowing like those wounds would have been open at yeah. this point yeah exactly like, yeah. yeah very unlikely uh but i like oh to see i don't i don't rampant. i don't think that would have been known really no probably not, not. it probably came out a bit later didn't it yeah probably not at the time yeah it is good to see that rampant <clears throat> speculation with no discernible reasoning <laughs> has never left <laughs> it, it's never it's never not been here and it never will not be here it will <laughs> always be here. just complete baseless speculation it's yeah. here to stay. One one little mystery that I do think is quite good, um, and you get like nuggets of it, and it keeps being something that pops up until you find out why. Is the firstly the setup of once you get three people, what's down there in the fast lane? Yes. But then also that you need three people to even get in the fast lane. Yes. Um, because you constantly see people like the the girl the girl that buys forgets from the mood dealers she's like my parents went on the motorway and the doctor's like oh so you'll see him again in like a week or whatever yeah and she's like no nah, no nah, i'm gonna put no. this on <laughs> yeah I'm so there's constantly that. a tease of what is going on yeah that i think is it, like it it builds really effectively throughout the episode and when martha gets kidnapped uh by christopher eccleston then you get to not christopher you, eccleston yeah, by not Christopher Eccleston, yeah. then you get a bit more, a bit more answers. But I, I, do you know what? I love how immediately the Doctor just goes from zero to a hundred, and he's like, like because I mean, his like now that we can look at it as like adults, like his trauma is just losing someone when he's doing stuff. Yeah, and it's exactly what happens here. And he's like, I'm gonna fucking kill all of your shops. <laughs> like, I'm so cross. I don't think he says I'm gonna kill your shops, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah he is you know very I mean? he's mad he is mad i like i like an angry 10 he, david yeah. Tennant plays it very well i love when he when he just fucking he has a go at those peddlers and he's like i'm closing this street down tonight 
that yeah, good old oh. David Tennant fucking articulation that he does. That that is the word, isn't it? When he's yeah. cross, he, yeah. Every that's his theatre training. Every syllable is uttered. Yeah, it is. he articulates every single fucking letter in his mouth, and it's and it's great. He does it very well, um, and and they pay attention. Clearly, they're not like who the fuck's this. Because uh, yeah. spoiler alert, later in the episode, they're like, "Oh yeah, we better go." That guy seemed yeah. mad. Like, <laughs> that guy he seemed pretty really, cross. He seemed like, pretty pissed. Like, we should go. <laughs> That's not happening in real life, is it? Like no. David Tennant will come back and be like, "It's time to thing," and one of them just shoot him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gave us all day to prepare for this. <laughs> Oh, he'll get the seven treatment and just walk out the TARDIS and just get rattled with bullets. Oh, right, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, Martha's. Um, yeah, I, I just love how cross he is. Like he's his trauma response is losing someone and then just fucking going on a war path. Um, yeah, and that's kind of what fuels the the entire episode. Really, it's just the Doctor trying to get back there and then when his goal shifts it becomes about saving her rather than reaching yes. her yeah absolutely um so to do that he makes his way to the the motorway he finds like a little service hatch or whatever and gets inside and then we get i think our, our first real reveal our first look at the motorway um mm. lot of cgi a lot of cgi cars <laughs> a, lot of, <laughs> a lot of smoke yeah, it's um, uh, you said you said the budget was saved, and I I don't know if it was necessarily saved for the rest of the season. I think it was all spent on this one shot, and and like it still doesn't show very nicely. <laughs> like, well, look, it's two thousand and seven. Okay, it is what it is. I I was about to say I raise you the movie Transformers, which actually looks great. Yes, two thousand and seven for two hundred million dollars, <laughs> Lawrence for for the Doctor <laughs> Who's entire production budget for up to season seven. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. It's true. Um, but yeah, no. So we yeah we do get our first look at it. Um, and this this is my favorite part of the episode. To be fair, just kind of. The doctor jumping from oddball to oddball in their car. Oh well, that's jumping ahead a bit. That's oh, is it? Take yeah. me, take me. What, what, what's what's next? Well, you are trying to get through this, aren't you? I mean, I'm on a tight <laughs> deadline today. Let's slow Not down. To be, let's, so take me, me let's take it easy. Let's take it easy. Let's chill out. Let's make our way through the episode. <laughs> For fuck's sake. And. <laughs> <laughs> So Ten is out. He's on the side of the highway or whatever. He's cho he's breathing in the fumes. He's getting uh, choked out or whatever. And then he's saved uh, by a, a cat, a friendly little cat, um, played by Andrew O'Hanlon himself. Father I too Dougal. went to Google to find out his name. <laughs> I knew his name, Lawrence. Actually, uh. <laughs> I'll have you know. <laughs> um, we have. We have spoken about our love for this man before. <laughs> we have, yeah. He's great. He's a great actor. He's a good comedy actor. He's uh, probably best known for his roles in Father Ted uh, yeah. as Dougal and um, and My Hero as whatever he's called in My Hero. I don't know what his name is, but I think it's Thermo Man. Thermo Man, that's it, yeah. Th yeah. A, not a, a character who is not too dissimilar from a Time Lord, because doesn't he regenerate at one point? Does he? Does he turn into someone else? Yeah, he turns into someone else. Like I think in the last season that he was recast. Um, oh no! Yeah, it wasn't Andrew Lohanlin for the last season, um, but it was. It was clearly a thing of like, oh, this is a new thing that's been written in because like no yeah. one else knew about it or whatever. And like he's got a wife and kids, and now he's like. Oh, I'm a new man, or whatever, and a whole life as well. And like, yeah. does, she, does the wife stay married to this man? Does it like? Yeah, it's it's very it's very confusing. Um, good show though. My my hero is genuinely like I I haven't revisited it since I was young, but like I yeah. have such fond memories of yeah. watching that show. Me too, me too. I used to watch that all the time. It's very fun, and, and he's and he's good in this. He's not wasted here at all. He's a small part. It is a small part. Yeah, it's a small part. He's a little cat. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a bit of fun. Yeah, <laughs> so I, 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 a very Irish cat. I want to know what like what happened here in this whole family. To be honest, because well, like I, I don't. I'd rather Jeanette, it's like the cars wormhole, isn't it? Like yes. once you open the cars can of worms. Yeah, this is a this is a confusing family. I, I think I ever know what this says. Um, I don't want to know how this human woman gave birth to kittens. 
<laughs> that's, just, that's just very confusing. It is very nice to see David Tennant holding a kid. And that is very cute. Yeah. Therapeutic, if you will. Um, but I, insanely I, cute kittens, insanely too. cute kittens. They they did good. They got a good selection of cute little kittens. Um, oh, now I'm sad because I'm thinking, oh, they're all probably dead. <laughs> I had that thought every time I see like a dog in Doctor Who or like a cat or anything. Yeah. I'm like, oh, it's dead. Now, oh, it's like, probably dead. Yeah. yeah. Although oh. cats can live decent length lives. 2007. That cat. That could be that, alive. Yeah. They were kids. They, they, that's true, yeah. It's probably filmed in 2006. Okay, now, now we're chipping away a bit. <laughs> yeah. Now we're getting a bit too close. It's 2023. <laughs> that, that was, what, 17? 17 years? It's possible. It's 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 possible. I've known a cat that lived to be 21. Yes. I think that there's... thing was like, that. Bit, it'd been dead for five years before it died. Yeah. yeah. I, they'd be on their way out. But, yeah, but they yeah. might still be making it. I, I choose to believe. Okay, <laughs> I choose to believe all these cats have uh, a good retirement home set up. They got like a, they're living in comfort. They're yep. feasting on <laughs> salmon and tuna and whatever. They've got dreamies aplenty. <laughs> um, I I choose to believe. Speaking of feasting, do you want to talk about poo cookies? <laughs> I don't, to be honest. Because but... Martha be eating them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was. It was more of like a like a cracker, wasn't it? Like a a wheat cracker. It was like more of like yeah, just some kind of sort of packaged lump. Yeah. Of like food. Yeah, but it's a poo cookie. But it is a poo cookie. I mean, look, it is a poo cookie. It is. Yeah. It it's is recycled nice. waste into food. Yeah, it's not nice. Um, but I, I've got a note that says like in Martha's car, her, I like that her, her doctorness still hasn't left. I don't, I don't mean doctor in Doctor Who. I mean, no, I go. She's a doctor or training yeah. to be a doctor, because um, she's like ripping the like what is essentially just the nicotine patch off a pregnant woman. Yeah, and it's like stop it. What are you doing? <laughs> Even though you've kidnapped me and I don't like you and I could be here for six years on a on a road or something. Yeah, don't do that. Uh, it's still like that duty of care that that she has which is often bigger than her in her scenario um at least in the way she perceives it which is good um yeah but the poo cookie though <laughs> great that's a it's a great point lawrence <laughs> summarized with the poo cookie though <laughs> well i mean you're gonna you're no choice you're gonna have to eat it aren't you uh, yeah, I guess that's that's true. That's true. She I wouldn't doesn't. be going on the motorway though. She, as soon as she realizes what it is, she doesn't eat it. She stops eating it. So mm. she made her choice. Um, what, what happens after this? So the doctor's with Brannigan. He wants to know. Yes, he needs Brannigan's network of people. Ah, cars yes. that he's tapped into. Yeah, so they talk to a delightful uh, little lesbian couple, a uh, very odd lesbian couple. Here's one thing. Um. This episode is set in New New York, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, on New Earth, in New New York, which is, you would assume, America. Because it's yeah. New New York. They talk about Brooklyn. It seems like the same sort of setup, okay? It's, it's very much based on old Earth. Everyone is British. <laughs> everyone. <laughs> not just, like, some. Everyone. He's Careful. fucking Brannigan. Irish. Irish I'll give you Brannigan. Brannigan's Irish, but he's still not American. Okay. <laughs> okay. The only person with a hint of an American accent is Sally Calippo, and she's a fucking hologram. Okay. Yeah. What's going on? What's this? I mean, what's this weird British Empire world that has been created here? What they also that... say motorway a lot, and Americans would say highway. Oh, Americans yeah, don't say true. motorway. But like, I mean that 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 squanders what I was gonna say as a rebuttal. But like, what's ever happening in Doctor Who? Like, it wasn't until that like I'm pretty sure Doctor Who didn't discover America until season six, and then there's American characters who are like, we're the most American characters that have ever lived. Lawrence, what's the very next episode after this? Oh fuck! <laughs> 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 Fuck's sake. <laughs> 
<laughs> Look, you may have a point. Yeah. But I think we're getting away from what truly matters <laughs> in that Doctor Who will always be set in Wales or London. Y- yes. Well, no matter where they certainly. say they are. Yeah. Okay. But still, it's just one of those things I can't help but notice. Like, it, it, if there was some American characters, then they'd be like, fine. But it's just the fact that there isn't any. Everyone is British. Yeah. And look, it's like five billion years in the future or whatever. <laughs> I get that. But still, <laughs> it still just seems weird that everyone is British. Especially, like, they live in, like, British customs as well. Like, there's a yes. guy in a bowler hat and a suit. Like, he's exactly. wearing a full Kingsman get-up. Yeah, yeah, and he's like, oh, it's like New Times Square in here. <laughs> what does this mean? What are you saying, yeah. you British We man? all know you wanted to say Piccadilly Circus. <laughs> exactly. That's the, that's the UK expression. Yes. And you know you wanted to say it. It's like Piccadilly Circus in here. Yeah, it's true. I've, I've got a note, and you, you, I'm wondering if you can help me with this. Um, it's because I just had a moment while watching this yes. where I thought, when does the season three blue suit actually return? Next episode. Because is it next episode? Next episode, yeah. And next episode is Daleks in Manhattan. Yes. And he's blue in that one. He's blue in that one, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, I watched the next time trailer. Defeats my entire purpose. Of <laughs> what were you going to yeah. say? What were you going to say? <laughs> well, I was going to say, because I know that he spends two episodes as a human and he's yes. just wearing his like tweed jacket. Yeah. And his fancy era piece. Um, I thought that he was wearing the brown suit for the Dalek two part, but obviously not. No. Um, he's in the tux for the Lazarus experiment. Yes. Um, and I'm pretty sure for the Master three part, he's in the blue shirt brown suit combo. He is in the brown suit. Yes. So is it uh, is the blue suit only in three episodes of season three? I think it might also be in forty two. Oh, I forgot about forty two. Yeah. Yeah, I think it might also be. I think it's the. That like blue jacket, possibly like a top underneath or a shirt underneath oh, combination. Okay. I can't really remember, but I think it might be. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, you you gotta remember that we're in a run of like at the moment we're in a run of episodes that are set chronologically, like immediately after each other. We've gone from yeah, one, true. we've gone from one adventure string to the next at the moment. That's why Martha's had the same outfit for like the past three episodes or whatever. So. She's like, have you got a shower here? I stink. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm wearing flared jeans and leather <laughs> yeah. everywhere I go. I a smell. leather jacket over just a vest. That's, yeah. not, that's, that's not good. You'd be swearing up a storm in them. Oh, that, those armpits are wet, aren't yeah. they? Like, they're not, that's not great. And she just also, spent the night in Shakespearean London. So like, no, not much indoor plumbing about, is there? Yeah, and a, and like she'll come out of this one. Like I've also just spent like the last two hours in a smelly sewer, like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in like in in some guy's car that ne- they haven't left in like fucking six years. That's gonna yeah. stink. I would stink. Yeah, yeah, no good. Janice Joplin gave him the brown coat though. Who's Janice Joplin? <laughs> <laughs> well, as someone that already knew this and didn't google it yeah <laughs> i can confidently say that she is a prolific musician between the 40s and 60s i knew that and i knew I, the songs that she sang i do too in fact i'll name one of them are oh, we done of time no okay. you, can, you can go on <laughs> no, no no it's fine we can move on no, no, you can. i don't have one <laughs> please play um, janice joplin i've got to say i'm not wild on what i've heard that sounds good yeah the doctor likes it. That's enough. There you go. And he stole her coat or whatever. No, he got given a coat. No. It's really... still her coat. She wasn't walking around with some six foot <laughs> fucking brown trench coat. Well, that's what he says. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> um, he does have quite an introspective moment, which I quite like, where he's, I think he's speaking to Brannigan when he says it. Maybe. Um, Wait, what? That he, that he was <clears throat> like, he lost someone and he, he was too busy showing off. He couldn't help just getting caught up in like i'm the doctor and look at all these cool things i can do yeah um yeah and i do like that and he's like he's like because yeah i think brannigan says like oh she must be someone special to you and he's like no i hardly know who she is to be honest i was just so content with letting her think i was the coolest person alive both martha and the doctor get a moment of like realization in this episode of like Mm. oh i don't know this person at all like (laughs) i don't know what's going on (laughs) really <laughs> it's like it's like the um the episode two of um i think it's the world's end of rose mm. um and when she's just like on the phone to her mum and she like puts the phone down and she's like who the fuck is that who am i here with yeah. <laughs> like, what is it what am i doing 
Um, but yeah. I, th- right, let's talk about the car hopping sequence. The the only action sequence in the episode, and it's just David Tennant moving from uh, <laughs> the top of the set to the bottom of the set, really. Yeah, basically. It would have been a very... <laughs> It would have been a day where, like, he jumps down and then the yeah. set department come in, they redress it, and yeah. it's like, right, okay, now I can jump back into this same room. <laughs> oh, that would have taken so long to film. That is, yeah. That hours of... I I would imagine that they did it over the course of a couple of days. Yeah, And, like, probably. while they were dressing other things, he was off filming him and a big slippery head that's fallen out of his case, um, <laughs> which we'll get to. <laughs> You'll get Nathan Litz very anxious to talk about this. <laughs> um, uh, moving yeah. on. Yeah, so we've got... Um, I like all the different vibes of the cars. I do think, like, although it does... Oh, wow. Sorry. My door's just opened. What happened? <laughs> oh, no, I do think right. that, like, although you can... You can tell it is the same set, just repurposed. Yeah. You do pick up on like a different vibe every time. Yeah, it's it's themes to, to whoever the... the driver or whatever it is whoever owns yeah. it like it's the, like their place yeah. yeah the the old lesbians couple is just like like a granny's flat basically like a <laughs> is, is, go to your nan's house it looks exactly like that like, yeah and what, what i like about that one is it's not even like massively different it's just kind of like it's industrial but they've put like a little cozy over like yeah. certain things like a little rug <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, it's there's good. one there's... guy who's like he's just got a whole bunch of white shit everywhere. Like, what's that guy doing? He seems weird. Like, yeah, I, I, look, I don't want to throw around accusations willy nilly, <laughs> but like, <laughs> someone needs to take a look at what's going on there. Yeah, I think so. And they're like the weird, like, it, a little yeah, hairy it's like man. Cool. There's, there's a there was a little hairy red man as well. Yeah, the hairy red. I've just put the red and hairy one with a question mark. Um, I I feel like I missed it, and maybe I was just writing a note at this point. But was okay. there a naked one? There was. Yes, there was. There was a nudist couple. Yes, yes, and they were both just in the buff. I've got my newspaper over my yeah. chest. Oh God. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> there was the Asian stereotype one. There was. was there was the Asian uh, anime kawaii girl stereotype. <laughs> yeah. Russell was like, "What we got that looks like not from England?" Yeah. <laughs> Let's just put it in there. We got dragons. We'll put some dragons in there. That'll do. <laughs> um, yeah, that was Doctor Who showing its age a little bit there. Um, but yeah, what mm. I, I tell you, what I do think is fun because we, we didn't mention it earlier on in the episode, um, but we actually get a little bit of a tease to the face of Bo's voice and novice Haim reloading her gun. And so, all while this has been going on, yeah, in the back of our minds, we know that she's like, "I'm gonna get the doctor," and I've reloaded my gun. Yeah. Um, so when she, I do like that when she like pops back down and she's like where's the doctor? And like, she's pointing a gun and the doctor like gives her a hug and it's like, no, this, hey, no, hang on a minute. One sec, you were evil. <laughs> What's all that about? She wasn't evil. She was just, she was caught up in a web of, uh, yeah. of, of shit going on. But yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the other one died, didn't she? The Martha's mum one. Martha's mum died. Yeah. She, <laughs> she fell down that big elevator shaft. Right. Yes. She's like, yeah. I knew someone that looks a bit like someone that could be your mum. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I like the fact that like the doctor's met so many people. Mm. He's just like someone from a previous adventure. No, hang on, you weren't a good one in yeah. the previous adventure. Yeah, I got a bone to pick with you. Um, well, this he, is this is she, kind of the um, the the final part of the Face of Bow trilogy, really. Uh, I guess it is in yeah. a way. Yeah. Yeah, because we got the first one with um, the end of the world. The sequel, New Earth, and then this is kind of the the third part of that, really. But there's plenty more the face of Bo to come. Nope, there is <laughs> not. This is where it ends, and we never <laughs> see him again. <laughs> well, let's so not novice home takes the doctor away to do the plot. She's yes. like, You're come looking for Martha, you've gone about this all wrong. Yeah. Come with me and my teleport that only works once. Bit of a a quick fix resolve, isn't it? Yeah, well, of course it is. But uh, before that, some big crabs or whatever. Oh yeah, there's um, I, <laughs> I've got a note somewhere that's like um, Milo, a driver who's moved five miles in his entire life, can do like a fucking fighter pilot run with no issues whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, 
That is fine. It is what it is. It's true. Um, there, there's Navy flyers that couldn't fucking do that. And yeah, M- Milo's a weak Sunday driver. <laughs> instinct kicked in, man. That fatal flight instinct, it kicked in. And he chose flight. He's soon to be a father. Yeah, He's, there you go. He knows what he needs to do. Exactly. Um, so the Macra are a classic Who villain. Um, they appeared in the second Doctor episode, Terra, or the second Doctor serial, sorry, Terra of the Macra. Um, and I know nothing else about them. So there we go. Yep. I didn't even know they were in the first one. I knew that the Doctor said he'd seen them before, but I figured yeah. that was just some whimsy. No, they were in classic Who. Big le- can you imagine how those fucking massive crabs that looked in the sixties? True. Well, they, apparently they, they weren't massive crabs, were they? Because he does say there were. They I looked like up civilized. A, I looked up a picture, and there was a big crab. So ah, so maybe. okay. Then well, civilized big crabs, I guess. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> One wore a tie, <laughs> yeah. and he had a crab wife. Yeah, <laughs> so this is my crab son. He's yeah, he's going through some stuff and he doesn't talk to me right now. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, so Novice Hain, they save the day pretty quickly. They Well, they go to the Senate. We find out that the world died in seven minutes because everyone took a bliss. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, that was, yeah that was I like kinda that. Like, it's interesting to see like the doctor, you know, save the day and, and whatever happened 20 years ago, but then this new drug came about and oh, just everyone fucked it, basically. Yeah, it's it's a and there. What I found was really interesting is like, mm. it was, uh, like the novice Sam could have called for help. Yeah, and although like she could have technically, but that would have involved breaking like the last act of the Senate, which was to put them under a quarantine. Which is like, don't come here. This shit can't get off this planet. Yeah, um, yeah, genuinely quite interesting. I wish we had like hits a different. bit more of a wider scope for how it looked in the world. Hits different after twenty twenty. Yeah, yeah, they all got COVID and died. Yeah, um, yeah. The whole, the whole, like, uh, what I really, really liked was the kind of the more hopeful spin on it. The the drivers weren't abandoned; they were sectioned off to be saved. Yeah. Um. Maybe not the best idea. No, probably not. To stick them in a big tunnel with a bunch of exhaust fumes or whatever. Yeah, but at the same time, the intention was there, and in seven minutes. Yeah. It's a panic, isn't it? <laughs> like... it's, it's a bit much, yeah, for seven yeah. minutes. Um, but anyway, the day is saved. The doctor does some science. He does some vague science. Um, yep. he, he gets to do that thing where Ten frantically <laughs> just like grabs a wire on the floor and then just feeds it through with his hand. He follows it along for a little bit. Good bit of fun. He loves some wire work. Yep. Um, yeah. I get the feeling that like a lot of the time behind the scenes... Tenant would just be like, like the script would be like, Tenant does, like, like the doctor does the things, yes. like science things. And Tenant would be like, Tenant would go up to like the prop department and be like, What have you scattered around the set? And they'd be like, Got you got a wire, you got a few paper clips. And he's like, Say no more. That's Brilliant. fine. Say no more, Chief. I've got it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I can handle this. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do love the moment where he has like, he gets ready, he has a big victory moment. He's like, Here we go, yes. But then it doesn't work. And he's like, no, That's yeah, good you get that kind of yeah, sound, yeah, <laughs> yeah. very good. good. Fun. Um, yeah, no, I <laughs> got <laughs> so we we have to talk about it. Um, I know you don't want to, mm. but the face mm. of Bo is here, yes, and he shielded novice Haim. I put down, he got that smoke riz. Um, <laughs> come on, stop <laughs> doing this. <laughs> the face of Bo shielded novice Haim and his smoke. Stop doing this. He was like, Hold up, I need a nurse. Great. I need I need someone. Yeah. And yeah. Um I like that, that that's kind of like her penance for uh, being a weird cloning genocidal cat in the last one. Yeah. Um she's like and she she's different. She seems cool now. Like I don't remember it being that evil in the last one. I thought she seemed she, quite cool then. She was never evil, but she was like matter of fact, this is how yeah. we save people. Yeah, that's true. She was. She was. Yeah, but it, it wasn't. It wasn't. She, her, she didn't seem like she was a bad person, but what she was doing was inex, like inexplicably evil. She was following like the rules and the faith of the sisterhood or whatever. Yeah, and yeah, some religious subtext in there for you. And perhaps there is. <laughs> Someone else will talk about that though. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Not as we're too scared. <laughs> um, I genuinely think one of my favourite ten lines after hearing it again is "Don't go dying on me, you big old face." Yeah, that's a, that's, good. A, that's a good line. To be honest, it yeah. is a good one. 
Yeah. Uh, um. Yeah. Go on. Ah, oh, he's just a big face. He's um. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Uh, and Martha's saved. Whatever. She comes back. Um, they reunite, and then she gets to meet the big old face as well. Um, she's rightly confused and concerned, I think. Um, so like, don't worry, that's a cat and that's a face. You're fine. <laughs> yeah. I don't like him. <laughs> what is it you have again? Because now we can get into the meat of it. What is it you don't like about the face of both specifically and how he is Jack? He's okay. He's not Jack. I think that's the main thing I don't like. He's okay. he's not Jack. He's not. I don't. He, what if he, I told you that canonically he was? Jack? What if I told you that canonically he's not? Okay. Okay. <laughs> because he's not. He, like I, I don't even think the. It's hard to argue at this point because yes, Jack does say the face of Bo they called me. Okay, but that does not explicitly confirm that he is going to grow into a great big face. Okay, yeah. it it doesn't. There is some leeway in that scene as well because the the Doctor and Martha are kind of like, no, it can't be. Yes, and they're right, it can't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it it's just one of those things that make no sense and doesn't fit at all it's like it's like if you watch star wars and then mm. you got you watched all nine star wars movies and then you got to the end of the ninth episode and then uh i don't know let's say f fucking chewy when and i'm anakin skywalker <laughs> <laughs> like what it makes no sense. I mean, the, there's an element of that which happened in Rise of Skywalker when Palpatine was like, I have a granddaughter now and it's her. No, that's that's different because it's not like we've not had these like different characters. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, she was always someone that we were ambiguous yeah, on. We, like her, from, yeah, like her, her identity and mystery was never fully explored. Whereas Jack had a two-parter in the series <laughs> Torchwood about it pretty much <laughs> look he's he's not a face <laughs> right? i think he might be a face i um, don't know like call me you're a face of bow denier i am a face of, i am a face of bow denier and i th and i also think like i think it's a bad review if it is true all right great what does that even add to yeah oh, i'm not speaking to the quality of what it brings <laughs> to the show which i think is nothing <laughs> absolutely nothing i'm just speaking to here's my backup evidence right because i wrote okay. some notes and th this is not this is surface level stuff i'm gonna counter all of this all right. okay well let's go let's go one by one yes the face of Bo has lived for billions of years who do we know that has the capability to do that me and i don't <laughs> mean me i mean the character who Maisie williams plays in series nine of doctor who she's literally called me and she okay. can't die <laughs> all right <laughs> would you accept that it might be Maisie williams then I get no because <laughs> we see that she lives for billions of years, and at no point does she grow into a giant fucking face. The Doctor regenerates; things can change into stuff, and we don't know what the world is going to be in a billion years. The Maybe Doctor there is, a is a Time Lord from Gallifrey. He's an alien being that's built into his DNA. Later, we find out it was put there by a mysterious woman, but it was, but it's built into his <laughs> DNA. Okay. <laughs> But let's be honest, Jack, the new series won't acknowledge that, so we can just ignore the timeless child. Jack is a human. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, he he's calls him a, old friend. He's a human who can't die. Yeah. But he's a human. Yes, okay, he calls him old friend. They met 20 years ago. It's true. I call you old friend. Exactly. I had known you close to 20 years. Uh, eight now, about eight. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. Hello, old friend. <laughs> Hello, old friend. <laughs> you are not alone. How would he know that? Because he's a big fucking mysterious head. <laughs> no, that's not enough. That's not enough. He, he leaves him a clue for a scenario that Jack was directly involved in. But what does that even mean, though? What? Why does the fact? Okay, the at one point. Six fucking billion years ago, all right, from the face yeah. of Bo's perspective, he had an adventure with this guy, and then the master happened, or whatever. Why Why does then he need to tell him, 
this information, but in a weird cryptic way. Right, the cryptic way is because he's a mysterious head. Yeah, okay, so w but why does he need to tell him this, though? I would say because at this point, knowing where the Doctor is in his life, that being very much miserable about being the last of the Time Lords, which this episode focuses on heavily. A bit. It's a coincidence that, that someone that would know that he is not alone <laughs> can be in the episode to tell him that from a past experience they had but together. But why? But what What does it add? It, does, it doesn't need to add it. I'm not saying it's good. I'm just saying it happened and it's there. No, I and don't. And you can't deny that it happened and it's there. I, no, I can't. I can't. Because it, <laughs> it does happen and it is there. I just think this is something that, like, you, I don't fucking buy for a second that when we see the fucking bow in World's End or whatever that episode's called, we're like, oh, that's Captain Jack Harkness. No, no, I, you're, this is season three thought of, and that's This it, is yeah. 100% something that Russell, when he was writing that final scene uh, in fucking Torchwood Bay or whatever, you're like, oh, let's throw this in there. That'd be cool, because why yeah. not? And then people are trying to retroactively make it fit. And that's fine. That's the entirety of fucking Star Wars, all right? Like, I'm <laughs> yeah. not, not going to sit here and disparage that, because that, 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 that's fine. But I personally don't buy it. I don't like it, um, and frankly, uh, it can go away. I think it's a good bit of sizzle, and I like. But, but it's not though, because what does the, it no, add? No, no, the yarn. No, the, the reveal. No, the, the, uh, yarn, the yarn. The yarn thing. Well, okay, that's dumb as well. Don't get no, me it's start, a bit of sizzle. Don't it's get nice. me started on the yarn thing, because like, how does that even uh, make sense? Not. We'll get to alone. That. Yeah, we'll get to that. Um, the the you are not alone yes that's a good bit of sizzle it's it's mm -hmm. definitely interesting it definitely piques your interest at this point in the story um yes i will i will say that mm -hmm. where it all goes pff, whatever but <laughs> <laughs> fair enough um all right fine it comes out of all this the the stuff is saved the doctor opens up the thing they all they all fly up and they're like look at this it's the sun yes and then as a in a perfect chorus martha hears them singing in the distance yes um, yeah, a group of people singing doesn't sound like that, but that's fine. <laughs> like, yeah, it's fine. It's a nice little hymn. Yeah, you forgive it. And earlier on, to be fair, the like the prayer, the prayer song that they sing. Yeah, that's nice and moving. Yeah. Like you see Martha kind of take in that moment, and it's really, really nice. It's a sweet little moment. Yeah. Um. But the I think one of the best scenes of the episode um is easily the the Doctor. Like, like Martha says, like, you need to tell me about something or whatever. And the doctor's like, why? Like, why do I need to? Like, why do I have to? It doesn't matter. It's not important. And she just picks up the, like, discarded chair from the mood dealer stand. Mm -hmm. And just, like, ref and the doctor's like, he gets cross for a second. He's like, oh, you're staying, are you then? And then he's like, oh, fuck. And kind of realizes he's been put in a corner and needs <laughs> to start being honest. Um. But yeah, great, great scene. Um, I think Tennant sells it so well in like the the speaking about Gallifrey, and I like that we don't, as it like pulls up as well, like it we get them talking about it, and the camera did, like kind of starts to pull away and go somewhere else, and they're still talking about it, and it, the sound just fades out, and I like that that's like it's their moment, it's a personal thing between them, and it's kind of something that like. As a show now, we don't need to worry so much about the Doctor being closed off as much as he was. Yeah. And I just like a meta way to communicate that was really nice. Ten's mostly a dickhead throughout this series. Um, yeah. um, but this is a good moment of growth for him. Though. Yeah. This is a good moment for him to, first of all, admit he, that he lied to Martha and probably himself as well and start to just accept some truths and move on. He's still going to be held upon Rose. I get that. But it's it's a step in the right direction for him, really, mm. to, to open up and, and to let Martha in a little bit as well, to to, yeah. to accept her and not have so many fucking walls and defenses up around her. So, so yeah, it's definitely a good moment of growth from him. And, uh, uh, yeah, probably the, the best moment of the episode as well. It's just a really heartfelt, just really nice moment. Mm. Well... I don't know if it's the best moment of the episode because I would still reserve that for the face of Bo. No, no. Uh, 
um yeah i get that that's the episode really um yes yeah overall yes. i think it's a good one i think it's a nice little bit of oh what were you trying no, no, were you ready on, for the on, weirdo on, thing no no go on go on go on he's he's wait he i that no because that seems that that we're gonna make me look weird and sound weird, right? And I even pulled out his sonic screwdriver and pointed it towards his audio interface. <laughs> I thought he was ready to activate the weirdo thing. I, w- I will, and now you just gave the bit away, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm just getting ready. Look, good episode overall. Um, nice side characters, plenty of choice for our favorite segment of the show, which I wish Nathan would tell me about. I'll tell you right now. Weirdo of the week. Weirdo. You said you wouldn't dance. It was less disruptive dancing. You have to stop dancing. Um, I feel like the mayor in Footloose. We <laughs> <laughs> welcome to our favourite segment of the show. That was great. And everyone's favourite segment where we get to take a look back on some of the weird and wonderful and grubby little characters who cross our screens each and every week. Um, Lawrence, who is your weirdo for this week? My weirdo is Bowler Hat Man. Ah. Um, yeah, so he's... I've got him down. The doctor enters. He's like... It, like firstly, he's like, who the fuck is this guy in my house and what's going on? Yes. Uh, dressed head to toe in a full three-piece and, and and all the kind of bespectacles and the and the, the accessories and everything. He's got rings. He's got like a little cane to his side. He is like ready for a promenade. Out he in, looks out like the... the um... The um, oh, what's it called? You know, what's that pasta sauce called with a little guy in the bowler hat? Uh, is it Dolmio? No, there's a little pasta sauce, and it's like, and it's like mascot is the guy in the little suit and bowler hat. I is it like a black and white one? No, it's more blue. Oh, maybe maybe I don't know what you mean then. Yeah, the label. It looks like, like a pasta the, guy. The 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 suit is black and white, but like the label of the pasta sauce is like blue. I think. I, feel, I want to say like home prize or something like that. I can't say I know it, but I see where you, I see the vibe you're laying down. Yeah, but that's what it looks like anyway. He does, um, but when yeah, I just like that he's like, it. "Who the fuck is this guy?" And the, and then the dog's like, "You got any water?" And he's like, well, "Let it not be said I forgot my manners." Yeah. And it's like immediately at the water cooler. Um, yeah, but I think the real the real reason he's my top weirdo because there are a few in this episode that are a bit weird. Um, is that he has embarked on like what could possibly even be like a twelve-year journey in a full three-piece suit? I don't yeah. think I like. What? I sit in the passenger seat of a car for journeys, and I'm like, I'd sit in my pants if I could. Okay, I gotta be comfy on a on a journey. <laughs> well, don't. Um, <laughs> he could have got changed that day. Yeah, but why would you get changed if this is your life? Like, why would you... Like, I'm not saying be the nudist couple or whatever, but I'm saying don't put on a three-piece. Maybe it's a Sunday. Oh, and it's... Oh, they do sing their prayers. Yeah, there you go. So he's dressed for, for ch- his church he's, drive. He's got his, he's got his Sunday best on. <laughs> you don't know his yeah. traditions. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I could be completely mocking his religion. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Um, still my weirdo. And right, a lovable weirdo. Enough. I like him. Fair enough. Um, I like my weirdo for the most part. My weirdo is Brannigan. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, now Brannigan. <laughs> is this for the reason I think it might? It probably be. is. It probably <laughs> is. Yes. Um, <laughs> Brannigan is a fun little character. There's one particular moment which just hits a little <laughs> bit weird. <laughs> Um, when uh the doctor they're calling through his friends list and gonna see who can help um they call up the uh i can't remember what he calls them the let's say montgomery sisters or whatever um who who is the old lesbian couple Um, sisters our first clue (laughs) yes um but for some reason Brannigan cannot accept the fact that they're a married <laughs> couple and refers to them as sisters. Um, he's got some old-fashioned views, I guess. Yeah. Um, uh, he is homophobic, Lawrence. He is a homophobic cat. Um, I am. I have the line 
I have the note is Brannigan homophobic, and I'm glad I skipped over it because I yeah. figured it would be it would end up being one of us. Yeah. <laughs> like, a moment too odd to yeah, like uh, like overall a decent cat, a nice enough guy. Yeah, but yeah, that one moment and what I, what I don't understand is it like is it a joke or, or is it just a genuinely weird inclusion? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> It's, like, it's probably a joke for the time, but it's calling himself like an old fashioned cat, and like yes. it feels like a joke. Yeah, but it feels it. Just, but now it just feels so out of place, and it just yeah. feels like this is the year five billion, and you're still like fucking oh lesbians, <laughs> like <laughs> come on, man. He, he rings them at their home, and it's like you two are sisters. I can't accept anything else. <laughs> yeah. I we deny. <laughs> I will not validate your relationship. I deny it. To me, you are sisters. Yeah, and then he's like, "Oh, she's a car spotter as well." One of the one of the ladies. Yes, um, very fun. Just yeah, a silly, quite fun. silly time. A lot yeah. of weirdo choice. I was quite happy with the amount of choice up for yeah. debate today. Yeah, we've had some episodes that are indeed slim pickings, but uh, spoiled for choice this week. Play. I think we're going to get another one next week as well, like another uh, good selection. Yeah, I think so too. I'm very excited for next week. Yeah, uh, yeah there's a bunch of shit actually to talk so about. There's so much to go through. The start of a two-part banger, uh, mm. if there ever was one. Um, and some uh, faces will be there. Of bows. Nope. <laughs> nope. Hopefully not. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> oh yeah, dead now. Um, one thing I will add, um, a good point for people to, to go explore next, to check out after this episode, is uh, we spoke in Series 2 about the Doctor Who lockdown stuff and like fun little things that came out during those. Uh, there was a, um, a short, well, I say short, it's like 10 minutes, which is the reason I'm not going to play it now, but it's like a, a 10 minute sort of audio uh, adventure sort of thing. Um, where basically the doctor goes to visit Novice Hain on her deathbed. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, David Tennant returns, as does the actress who plays Novice Hain. Don't know her name, forgive me. Um, but yeah, it's a, just a nice little scene. I'd recommend people go find that. You can get it on YouTube. Um, but yeah, it's a good little, good little scene. Interesting stuff. Hmm. So yeah, go check that, that out. That does sound quite cool. I want to check that out, to be fair. Yeah, it's quite nice. It's quite nice. I think I might just heed you at your advice. And there's mysteries afoot with it as well. So Oh mysteries afoot. There are some mysteries afoot. So Does the doctor come back and be like, by the way, that big face you were looking after a year a couple of years back turned out to be my mate. And she does she does uh from what I remember, she does say to him, like, Oh Bo said you're not alone. Did you ever like figure out what that meant? And he just kinda of, like goes, Yeah, but we don't need to talk about that. We can just Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, so it is, it is referenced. In typical 10 fashion, yeah. something of meat and intrigue is brought up, and he's like, yeah, but you know, something else. <laughs> let's, do, let's talk about anything else. Yeah, it is, it is quite a nice little thing, though. Um, it's illustrated as well. So, Oh, that does sound quite nice. Yeah, go, go watch it. Go watch it. I will. Uh, and once you've done watching that, you can go and listen to these episodes when they come out. So you'll have to wait a bit once you've done that. Yes. Um, unless, of course, you decide to watch that at like 9.50 on Monday morning. Because yeah. then after the 10 minutes have passed, you'll you'll understand that a new episode of this show will be up by 10 a.m. on Monday. Ah, uh, well, <laughs> we'll, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Was no, it? but they're listening to this one. This oh, they are. That's week. true. They are listening to this one. But <laughs> full disclosure, this we're recording this on. Usually, we record like quite a bit in advance, but we're recording this like two days before, less yeah. currently less than forty eight hours until the episode is scheduled to go live. Um, it's been an unrelenting week. We've had so many <laughs> things get in the way. Yes. <laughs> stuff. So we'll we'll see how that one plays out. But hey, you're listening to it, I guess. So it came out. Was it late? Probably. <laughs> How's your Monday evening going? <laughs> <laughs> or perhaps Tuesday morning? Who knows? Ah, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> um, and they're very good. Uh, you can also give the show a little follow if you like. We are on uh, Twitter. We're calling it Twitter still, aren't we? I refuse 
to, this is the only time I will happily dead name uh, something. <laughs> so, yeah, Twitter, uh, at Twitter, at uh, Still Got Legs Pod. Uh, on threads, at Still Got Legs Pod. Don't worry about Instagram. No, you may as well. It may as well not exist. No. Uh, you can also give the show a little review. If you have any Hoovian mates, share it around. Uh, spread the good word of the Still Got Legs movement. Uh, if you enjoyed the episodes, consider giving us a little five star on your podcast platform of choice. Presumably there's a little review section where you can let us know your thoughts. Uh, also, keep an eye on the Twitter because we didn't do it for this episode, did we? Ah, fuck. No. <laughs> Maybe don't keep an eye on the Twitter. <laughs> but Nathan often tweets out uh, to get people's When he remembers, he does. <laughs> yeah, when he remembers. But often it's good to get a little bit of audience participation involved. Oh, uh, and it's been a fun segment. Uh, and to be honest, we don't really have time to do it this week anyway. <laughs> no, <it's true. laughs> Blessing yeah. in disguise. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll definitely do it for, for next week, though. Um, yeah. So it's probably up there now. Go, go find it. Um, I'll, go find I'll it. I'll tweet out but, for some thoughts on the next episode. Indeed. And speaking of some thoughts, you can hear some more of those thoughts on our other podcast, which Nathan will tell you about. It's called Another Happy Pod. It's the only other podcast in the world uh, where we talk about movies, pop culture, TV shows, that sort of stuff. Uh, that comes out every Friday at 10 a.m. Most recent episode was the uh, the Full Monty, uh, mm. fun little movie from the 90s. Um, and this week... We're doing Guardians 3, I think. Guardians yes, of the Galaxy correct. Volume 3. Uh, so there you go. A good bit of sizzle. Get excited and tell your nana all about it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, do. Someone's <laughs> nana actually did listen this week. I got I got word. Did you? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not going to speak about it here. I'll tell you in a minute. All right. Someone's, someone, I know that someone's mum and nan enjoyed a good episode of ours recently. Is that this one or another happy pod? No, this was another happy pod. Below. Right. <laughs> There's nans listening to us, is all I'm saying. Well, there we go. Out there. <laughs> and yours could be too. <laughs> and yours could be too if you told her about it, you selfish idiot. Yeah, um, come on. She's not finding it by herself. You've got, you got a leader there. Yeah, come on. You know you know what nan is like. you got to show them how, how podcasts work. <laughs> You can take the nan to the well, but you can't force her to drink. Yeah. Stop stop your nan from getting radicalized on Facebook. And <laughs> instead, let her get radicalized by still got that. <laughs> Become a Doctor Who cell. We'll, <laughs> we'll radicalize her in the opposite direction. So, <laughs> Which is, yeah, I mean, just as good. <laughs> Maybe definitely as mor morally dubious. <laughs> well... I'd rather <laughs> we had the choice uh, been radicalized oh, yeah. by Facebook or radicalized by still got legs <laughs> one of them seems better but hey. yeah it's true uh, anyway that's it you gotta go I do I really do <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, he's got a journey um, alright so bye bye, bye.